James Head is Professor of Geological Sciences at Brown University. He's trained astronaut crews as well as participated in the selection of landing sites for the Apollo Moon Program. Uh, James, welcome. Just how significant is this project, this launch? I think it's very significant. This is, of course, the third space station that China has uh, put into Earth orbit. And it's just a, a good demonstration of the fact that China is on the march in the future. Um, and joins the United States and ESA and Russia and other countries, um, you know, in a very, very important uh, mission. That is to say, to do science from Earth orbit and to, in fact, help others uh, start to reach for outside the Earth orbit, that is, the moon and beyond. For those of us who are not space scientists, uh, what are they going to do now that they're there? Well, it's really interesting. I mean, I think the best analogy is it's like you're moving into a new house. You know, you got to make sure the lights work, turn on the lights, make sure the toilets work, uh, essentially the heat and cooling, et cetera. So they'll be really kind of conditioning this. And it's a great place. I mean, the interior is fantastic. It, of course, it's modern. Uh, this International Space Station has been there for uh, 20 years. And, uh, and so <laughs> it's kind of an old house, if you know what I mean, whereas this one will be really great. But at the, like any new house, you have to check everything out first. That's what they'll be concentrating on initially. It's obviously a huge and significant achievement for China, but uh, how much of this is an international endeavor and international cooperation? Well, space is an organizational and technological frontier, and accomplishments in space really demonstrate national power. So anytime you do something this complex and this incredible, um, you know, it, it's, it boosts national pride and prestige. And indeed, um, it, you bring along international partners. And so, of course, this will be really important because it's another way, as with the U.S. and Russian International Space Station, where anybody in the world can apply to, in fact, um, participate. So this broadens the international participation in what is arguably not the final frontier, but the next big frontier, that is space onto the moon and onto Mars. I wonder to uh, what extent does uh, the presence of uh, China's space station uh, push forward the global space exploration effort? Well, you know, space is a big place. I mean, we, we really, we think of the Earth as being big, but it's really kind of tiny in the overall scheme of things. And so the more participation we have, the more space stations we have, the better able we are to understand our own home planet and then turn away from that to get the perspective that we accomplish by exploring the planet. So there's no doubt that this is the first step as with the United States, and going to the moon and beyond. And so we really look forward to not only populating low Earth orbit, but actually meeting on the moon, shaking hands, and doing scientific exploration. And how long before we get back research and results? What kind of time scales are we talking about here? Well, of course, this is a new house, so to speak. So they'll be working on construction in the coming year, but they're already taking experiments up and cameras and things that they'll be installing during this uh, approximately three-month uh, mission. And then additional uh, Chinese astronauts will be launched in the next year and a half, and they will bring up additional experiments. And of course, China uh, uh, is, is soliciting a whole series of experiments from international partners to include in these launches and to uh, operate uh, from space. Professor James Head, thank you very much for talking to us. Pleasure to be here. Thanks.